Today we're going to have a little look at constraints and we're going to use just some simple shapes to get across the principles that are required uh, when dealing with your constraints. And the important thing here is we're not just going to apply constraints, we're going to animate with them. And the reason for this is that there are a couple of complications that happen when you're animating with constraints. and the generally don't team, uh, seem to be covered all that often. So I'm going to have a little look into how you can animate a constraint on and off and deal with the popping that occurs. And that's the most important part. Now, this is important for game animators because we're forever picking up guns and swords and all sorts of other props and putting them down. And we need to be able to animate the, uh, the picking up and putting down effectively. So let's crack into it. First things first, we need to either be in rigging or animation because we need access to this window here, the constraint window. We have a variety of different constraints, but we're just going to deal with parent constraint here today. And the reason for that is that the parent constraint essentially does a point, orient, and scale, and aim constraint all in one. And it essentially makes the child of the, uh, the constraint do whatever the parent is doing. So it's a really, really useful one. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And let's, let's do it. So first things first, I'm, I'm going to be animating and making this constraint happen in accordance with an animation. So I might as well do the animation. So I'm going to key this here. I'm going to have this come over here. So I'm going to have it do this really dreadful animation and I want the constraint to happen here and then I want this to go yeah and then I'm gonna have this bounce over here so I'm gonna have this jump here pick up the constraint jump over here drop the constraint and carry on its merry way without the constraint. So we need the constraint on and off and we need a change in position to occur. And the change in position is the important bit because that's where popping happens. So let's get to this point and this is where we have our constraint. So we have our master, shift click our uh, slave and go to our parent options, parent constraint options and we're going to keep maintain offset on. If I take that off then the cube will snap exactly to the position of the sphere. And we don't want that behavior. So there we are. We now have a constraint. And as you can see, it's the constraint is permanently on. Obviously, that's not the behavior we want. We want the constraint to activate here. So I need to come in and have a look at my constraint. And you see here we have polysphere, which is what this is called. I'm going to call this master. So we have this constraint here, um, and that relates to this sphere. I should have changed the name before I did the constraint, but it's too late now. Um, and this can be animated on and off. So I'm going to click it and key selected. So at 12, I want it on. And at 11, I want it off. So turn it off and click key selected. And that is all working exactly as intended. Now, at this point, it's fine. Everything is fine. The trouble comes when I try to take this off. So I want it to stop at this point. So 23, I'm going to key. I'm going to key again at 22 because I want it to fall off at that frame. Now, as soon as I turn this off, we will likely have the popping effect. And there we go. So what this cube is doing is trying to go back to the place it was in when it got constrained. 
because as far as the cube's concerned, it hasn't been animated. It's, if you look at its translate x, y, and z values, apart from this period here where it's being moved by this sphere, they reset to zero. So it, as far as it's concerned, hasn't moved, it's been dragged. So it's gone back to its zero. And this bit gets tricky. Um, now, what we need to do to deal with this popping issue, unless we were going to uh, do a locator hack, which I could cover in another video, but I think I have that already on my channel, dealing with the locator hack. So what we need to do instead is we need to activate a hidden attribute on this cube called the blend parent. And the way I do that is by selecting my cube, the, the object that's constrained, and just setting any key. So I click key, and now you see we have blend parent. And what blend parent does is tells us whether or not any constraints are allowed to be on. And it's set to zero, so what this is saying is that no constraints on this cube are active. Now we could have five constraints, and if the blend parent is on zero, it would turn all of them off. So at 12, it is off. So let's, let's turn it on. I think I've done that out of the wrong frame. I have, so let's just grab these two and pull them one frame back. Okay. So there we go. So now constraints are allowed to be on. So far, so good until we get to here. So let's again key our blend parent. And we want at this point to have no constraints. And we have our popping occurring. Have I done this at the wrong frames again? I've done it at the wrong frames again. How is this occurring? Okay, bear with me. One frame into the future. Brilliant. Okay, so at this point, we have two attributes that we can play with with this constraint. And what we want is for our cube to be back over here. Now, what I tend to do, and this might seem kind of weird, is I turn these constraints on and off and on and off. And then I will set a key, a locational key, on this cube. And hope that I can deal with this popping issue. So let's go back to here where we want them on, and then at this point we want them off. And after I've wiggled them a little bit, I'm going to set a locational key here. And then, you see, I move to the next frame, and it's stuck. So my cube now behaves exactly how it should do. And it's a bizarre thing. Um, and it's it's almost like it's an update and a refresh issue that we have inside of Maya. Um, but in order to make the final position stick and not get that popping, um, this, this is purely my way of doing things. We waggle on the constraint and the blend parent, and then go to the frame before we take off the constraint, set a key, on the cube so that its location data is stored and then when we go to the next frame where everything is off it's all okay bizarre as it may be it works and i'm hoping it works for you also but um that basically brings us to the end of the video and this works for full human characters with swords as well as cubes and spheres uh, and i'm hoping that this has perhaps shed a little light on the issue for you and sorted out some of your constraint problems. Um, but nonetheless, that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you all for watching and take care of yourselves.